Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, we continue uh, solving problems on uh, combinatorics. This is the seventh series of problems of the first part. You see 1.7, so we will have another part. Um, now, this lecture um, is part of the whole educational uh, website, unizor.com, for um, advanced mathematics um, for teenagers. I do recommend you to go to this website and um, try to solve all these problems yourself first without listening to whatever I'm saying right now. All the problems are presented in the notes for this lecture um, well, with solutions and answers, but obviously you first check if you can solve it yourself. Check it against the answer and if it's good, fine, excellent and then listen to the lecture. So these self-study um, uh, are very, very important actually. So, because the whole purpose of this course is to basically to develop your analytical abilities, abilities to solve the problems. Because the problems which we are talking right now have practically no, nothing to do with the real life. So it's just for a training um, of your um, mental abilities, if you wish. Anyway, um, so let's go straight to the problems, and um, I have four of them. Number one. Okay, I have N houses on the street. Now, people who live in, in these houses. Well, let's consider for simplicity there is one person who lives in every, every house. They know only their immediate neighbors. So this guy knows this one and this one. This guy knows this and this. This one who is on the edge of the street knows only this one, right? So, <clears throat> now our task is to find three people who do not know each other. And basically the problem is how many different triplets of sets of three people um, you can pick from all these houses um, in such a way that none of them knows each other. Okay, um, I'm going to present it in, in two different ways actually. Number one is um, Let's calculate it this way. First, we will uh, count all the different triplets which I can choose. And then I will subtract those which I do not consider uh, fit for this task. I mean, those who contain somebody who knows each other, right? So, the total number of triplets is obviously number of combinations from n by 3. That's easy. Any three houses, any three uh, uh, people who live in these houses um, are in this count. Now let's exclude those which know each other. So we will exclude those triplets who contain people who know each other. Well, if there are people who know each other, they are neighbors, right? So it's either number one and number two or number two and number three, or number three and number four, etc. So, how many pairs of neighbors exist? Well, if the total number of n, then the neighbors are one and two, two and three, etc. And the, the last one would be n minus one and n, right? So, from one, two, to n minus one n, so it's n minus one, pairs. Now, with each such pair, I can choose any other house and I will get a triplet which I don't really need. People who has neighbors in it, right? Who know each other. Now, how many others? Well, if two are fixed, then there are obviously um, n minus two who are um, who belong to, to any other house, right? 
So I have to multiply number of neighboring pa uh, pairs by number of other people I can choose into each of these triplets. Well, here you have to be very, very careful. And this is the perfect example where this problem on, on, on combinatorics has this, how should I say it, some kind of underwater current. You have to be very careful in this particular regard because <clears throat> look at these three. Let's say this is number k, k plus 1, and k plus 2. So we have three houses which are in a row. They're all immediate neighbors to each other, right? Now, if I counted this pair, and then one of others would be to connect the k plus second to this pair, and I counted it. But then I can consider this pair and count this guy among others. So it looks like this triplet of immediate neighbors was counted twice. Now, how many immediate triples I have? Well, it's either 1, 2, 3, or 2, 3, 4, etc. And the last one would be n minus 2, n minus 1, and n. So it's n minus 2 of those, right? So I have to really subtract n minus 2 from this number because I counted double each uh, triplet of three immediate neighbors was counted twice as this pair plus this or this pair plus that. So that's a very, very important and very um, uh, kind of, it's a nuance, I would say, of this particular problem. Um, so you have to be very, very careful when you're counting something. So if you double counted something, you have to subtract it. So overcounting and undercounting are definitely dangerous in, in these uh, problems. So this is the number I really have to subtract. This is a number of uh, triplets which have uh, pairs of uh, people who know each other. And by the way, this is equal to, if you factor out n minus 2, you will have n minus 1 minus 1, so it will be n minus 2 squared. So the answer would be this. Now, as I was saying many times, it's very good to have the problem approach from different angles, right? If it will come up with the same result. So let's try to do it in this particular case. Here is the second way I would like to, to count. In this case, I don't want actually to go into the logic which leads to this double counting. I would like to count only those which really uh, must be excluded, only the uh, the, the, the triplets which, which have pairs of uh, people who know each other but without overcounting. All right, how can I do it? Well, here is my problem for the first uh, solution. I had these triplets of uh, neighboring houses, immediate neighbors, one after another, all three, counted twice. So let's just do it differently this time to avoid this. First, I will count how many uh, triplets exist where all three people know each other. Well, obviously it's those 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, etc., n minus 2, n minus 1, n. These are triplets of all three being immediate neighbors. I count them separately. So how many of them are? n minus 2, right? From 1 to n minus 2. Okay. Now, I will count only those who have exactly two neighbors who know each other. And the third one is remote. So the one, uh, the two are neighbors and the third one uh, is remote. Well, here unfortunately I have to split it in two cases. Because if these two, which know each other, are in the middle of the street, like these two. Then, and all together are n of them. 
then immediate on both sides and these two makes the number of all other remote things n minus 4 right n minus 2 and minus 2 immediate neighbors if however my pair is at the edge of the street I have to subtract only one immediate neighbors if I want to count remotes so in this case remotes are n minus 3 so for some pairs I have n minus 4 remote houses and for some pairs I have only n minus 3 so let's count them separately all right how many are um, pairs which are at the edge of the street well two one in the beginning pair and one pair at the end so I have two pairs and each of them has n minus 3 remotes to connect to this pair to have a triplet where only two people know each other on the other hand the other which are inside so how many pairs are inside well there are total number of pairs n minus one right one two two three etc n minus one n so the total number of pairs n minus one two of them are at the edges so the rest n minus one minus two which is n minus three pairs are in the middle of the street and they have n minus four remote houses which I can combine to make a triplet where only two people know each other so that's my total count n minus 2 plus 2 n minus 3 plus n minus 3 n minus 4 well equals to n minus 2 plus n minus 3 factor out I will have n minus 4 and 2 which is n minus 2 n minus 2 factor out I have n minus 3 and 1 n minus 2 which is n minus 2 square so I have to subtract n minus 2 square the same result as before so it's good that I have the same result it means I am on the right way but let me just spend some time to uh, simplify this so this equals 2 n n minus 1 n minus 2 divided by 1 2 3 minus uh, uh, n minus 2 square equals uh, okay what should we do well let's factor out n minus 2 I have n square minus n minus uh... 6n plus 12 right? n minus 2 was out so I have n minus 2 remaining multiplied by 6 so it's 6n minus 12 but there is a minus sign so it's minus 6n plus 12 equals n minus 2 uh, n square minus 7n plus 12 it's n minus 3 n minus 4 that's the formula now this is number of combinations from n minus 2 by 3 it's a very simple formula right so I don't know it seems to me there might be some kind of other solution which leads directly to this formula 
but I just don't know it. So if you know, by all means, send it to me and I'll publish it on the website. So it looks like this formula seems to be too simple to, you know, not to have a solution which leads directly to this. So maybe there is some trick which you can, you know, arrange and do this. All right, so that's it for this particular problem. Next. Uh, next is a simple one. You have M conference rooms. And each room can hold N people. So let's consider we have a conference and we have M times N people uh, participating in the conference and we would like to spread them among M rooms evenly N people in each room because that's exactly what each room holds. Question is how many different um, uh, arrangements we can we can make. I mean obviously the arrangement is basically uh, the same number of people to be in, 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 in one room uh, and if I change the rooms for instance and uh, I don't change the composition of the room, that's exactly the same arrangement, right? So uh, all rooms are equivalent and uh, obviously I have to count um, uh, how many different uh, ways to, to, to spread these m times n people among uh, m rooms exist. Now, um, the easiest way is first uh, have the permutation of all the people and there are m times n factorial but now they are broken into the rooms, right? The first n people here, the second n people here, the third people n people here, etc. But now if you think about it, if you change the rooms, it does not change the arrangement, right? So there are <coughs> m factorial of different uh, segments of the rooms. So if you just change the rooms, it doesn't change anything. Now, every room has a certain number of people, and if you um, permute all these people within the same room, it also doesn't really change anything, right? So you can definitely say that um, permutation of these n people, which is n factorial, and permutation of these n people, which is also n factorial, which is also n factorial, etc. So it's n factorial to the m power of m. Because these are all constitute the same uh, arrangement of people among the rooms. So that's the answer. You permute without changing arrangements the rooms and people within each room. Next, also easy, if you have n straight lines, now let's consider the most general case, like lines are not parallel, there are no lines which are uh, intersecting, no three lines which are intersecting in the same point, and uh, it's also important for this particular problem, um, there are no four lines which can be inscribed in a circle. So, because my question is about circles. How many different circles, and the circle uh, can be inscribed or circumscribed, whatever, inscribed, actually, in this particular case, can be inscribed into any triangle, right? So, question is how many circles exist which uh, are tangential, each of them is tangential to exactly three lines. Because for any three non-parallel lines we can find a, a circle which uh, uniquely tangential to uh, in, inside the triangle or outside the triangle, right? So you can have it here or you can have it here or here or here. So with each three lines you have four different circles which can be tangential to all three of them. So now like, the, the answer the, the, to the question is how many circles are there um, uh, which, which are tangential, with each of them tangential to three lines, is obviously four times number of different combinations from n lines by three. That's it. That's the answer. 
and uh, the fourth <coughs> problem um, actually I like this problem because I don't know how to to say how to, to qualify actually this I think it's cute if you wish um, and uh, it looks really simple but it has a very very important um, combinatoric sense so we have a cube now the cube has six sides and let's say I have six different colors I would like to paint six different sides with six different colors now obviously the question is how many different ways to paint six different sides of the cube with six different colors exist but I have to really make one very important um, note here if I can rotate the cube in some way and one combination of colors is basically transformed into another I really should consider them to be exactly the same color scheme right so my question now is more precise question how many different color schemes there exist okay um, now if we don't take into account uh, that one can be transformed into another then obviously I have six factorials which is 720 different uh, permutations of six colors now which of them are the same so question is how many different um, permutations are transformable from one to another here is my logic let's have this cube fixed in some position and some particular side is on the top all right so let's call this side number one now these sides would be number two number three number four on the back and number five on the left and number six on the bottom right so we fixed it now let's put one particular color into the number one okay number one is equal to red and put some other colors onto other number two is something number three is something etc now how many different transformations of this cube exist if my number one which is red is still on the top well if I fix the position of the top of the cube now the all transformations are actually rotations right so I can rotate the cube and there are four different positions I rotate it by 90 degree by 180 and by 270 so the beginning position and and three additional positions uh, rotations so I have four different positions of the cube with one side on the top right but there are six sides so I can first put one side on the top one of six and with each of them I will have four different uh, uh, positions of the cube so I have 6 times 4 equals to 24 different transformations of the cube which are completely equivalent to each other they are transformed from one to another first we position the top to whatever is necessary and then we start switching them around rotating them around around this vertical axis to get into the position so I have 24 different positions of the cube which are completely equivalent to each other well that means I have 30 different coloring scheme if you wish well that's it thank you very much um, uh, I, I, I do encourage you to go back to uh, unizor.com and uh, go through these problems yourself again uh, just solve it yourself check it against uh, the answer which is provided and that would be a, you know a, a, a good kind of exercise for your analytical uh, analytical mind um, that's it thank you very much and good luck <laughs>